Cha. Nagatsi hinu chad kishdiki ang. My hada name is Fox. Dong ish digud nai logging. I'm happy to see you. Welcome to edition 11 of Haida Language and Etymology. Today I want to talk about Haida health and the environment and how the Haida traditionally have conceptualized health as connected to the environment. Um, that's actually a pretty common thing in Alaskan Native cultures is to equate physical and emotional and even community health to the interactions and the level of respect that people have for their environment. And that actually ties into a lot of folklore. Um, a lot of folklore is, you know, when bad things occur, it's often because someone was disrespectful to an animal or the environment in some way. So, uh, that said, I want to share with you guys some things that I have noticed um, illustrating this um, just shortly um, in Haida language. And let's get right to that. So, um, my first word that I want to talk to you about here is the Haida word for rheumatism, which is limantisan or... Um, translates to rain sickness or tsig stiga, okay? Tsig stiga. So rain sickness, literally a sickness from the rain. You know, we talk about rheumatism and people are like, oh, my bones ache whenever it's the, temper the temperature changes or the pressure changes. So we have that same idea in Haida but it's literally connected linguistically to the word for rain. It's rain sickness is rheumatism. Sieg stiga, okay? So, let's, there are a lot of Haida words for rain and snow and different kinds of precipitation, and I am not going to go through all of those here today, but briefly, let's talk a little bit about rain in Haida. So, a place where it rains a lot is Tsiglaga, okay, rainy place, Tsiglaga, and steam, mist, fine rain, fine snow, ski, okay, and to rain, Guo, we've used that word a lot, you know, it rained on me, Guo <laughs> and Tsiga, okay. So, and indeed, the term for rain and wind is also tsig, okay? So, these things are related. We have words that mean, have more than one meaning, right? So, I think it's just interesting that we're so closely relating the physical bodies and environmental things that are occurring. Even though we have this idea in English that like rheumatism has to do with the weather, right? Like in Haida, it is the same word. They're, you know, related. It's the same. <laughs> so, um, so let's go over some phrases that, you know, reveal a little bit about you know, Haida culture and how the environment is related to behavior and wellness, right? Wellness is an important factor here. So here are some sentences that I have come up with that, you know, illustrate Haida wellness in the environment. So our first one here is Awang an Chinai hal kugagung. He is cooking fish for his mother. Awang an chinai hal kugagung. Okay. This is um, more of a kind of hide a phrase. Dank gin isdastlu sang kilagung. 
if they give you anything, be sure to say thank you for it, right? This doesn't just pertain to like gift giving interactions between people, right? There's this idea of reciprocity between the environment. So I think this phrase is actually important because it kind of can illustrate that cycle, right? Dank gen is das glu sang if they give you anything, be sure to say thank you for it. Then we have Gin Wadluan Damang Kingang. Take good care of everything, right? We have to take care of our surroundings, our environment, the animals that we hunt and harvest from. It's important. Gin Wadluan Damang Kingang. Take good care of it. Then we have Sangas Q Hak Hal Hiladung. She is drying some halibut for winter, right? Everything we do in Haida culture is procedural. We we prepare for the oncoming season and that's part of subsistence. Our activities illustrate like what our needs are for the future and how the environment provides, right? Sangas Q Hak Hal Hiladung. So then we have Sangas Lu Chinai Hal Lasung. The fish will taste good in the winter time. Right? We're preparing it. Sangas Lu Chinai Hal Lasung. And then we have Kugai A Shwagang Hal Dugang. He is going up to the falls to get some sakai, right? Kugai a sakhwagan hal dugang. So not only do you have to have the tenacity to go and do these things, you also have to have the understanding of when the sakai are going to be up at the falls, right? So, so much of this language illustrates the ecological knowledge of the Haida and their, you know, seasonal awareness. Something that we today often lack. We, we need to have more awareness of where our food comes from and like seasonal awareness of what kind of foods are available at any given time of year. This is something that the Haida were very good at and if you live in Southeast Alaska, if you learn indigenous languages or anywhere, if you learn an indigenous language from wherever you are, you can understand a lot more about what kind of foods are available at any given time of year. So I just think that this sentence illustrates that, right? Kugai a sakhwagang haldugang. He's going up to the falls to get sakai. Then we have Sang sahask u stigai tlatsgagen. All winter the flu was strong. Might be relevant to <laughs> people now in 2020, right? Sang sahask u stigai tlatsgagen. All winter the flu was strong. And then we have Gam gin dang tlatsang slu dang utsang. If you don't plant anything, you will be hungry. This is probably my best example here. Gam gin dang tlatsang slu dang utsang. If you don't plant anything, you will be hungry. So the environment defines the cultures that live in it often and usually the language can reflect the environment. This is particularly true of Haida and I am excited to share more of it with you. So next time we're going to be talking about more homonyms in Haida myth, homonyms in Haida myth, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. House dunk king sang the monogam king you.